CPL Newsroom presented by Volkswagen. We are back. It is a Saturday night, and Mitchell, you and I have just finished watching a heck of a semifinal between Cavalry and Pacific. Uh, 2-1 Cavalry, they are on to the final next weekend in Hamilton uh, to play Forge, but let's just we're just here to, to give some very quick reaction to this game that's just happened and, and break it down a little bit. Um, obviously, it's a pretty pretty exceptional performance for me from Cavalry, uh, especially in that first half, which we should get into. Uh, but Mitchell, there they lost their first chance, but they they won this one to go into the final, and it's uh, it's probably deserved, right? Oh, absolutely. I think for the first sixty minutes, especially, or maybe until Kukuda Mane uh, has a moment of magic and scores, and Pacific are, are given life, like they were absolutely dominant and full value for this victory. On everything from set pieces to open play to defending, it was a pretty comprehensive performance from the regular season winners. But I think something you can say of every single one of these CPL playoff matches so far is we have no idea what's going to happen right in, up until that final whistle. There's always just so much late drama. And once again, you know, a huge save from Carducci. Uh, Aparicio, I think, would want to have that one back uh, right before the final whistle where Pacific really pushed late. So, you know, Cavalry, they, they certainly made it interesting and more interesting than I think it needed to be towards the end. Uh, but, you know, by the bulk of play, they were fantastic and, again, fully deserving of their place in the final. Yeah, that was a, a crazy save at the end from Carducci. But, uh, you know, there's your goalkeeper is one of your players and sometimes you need them to make a play like that. For me, this was kind of a, a trademark Cavalry game, right? They, uh, I mean, it's a one goal game for one thing and they won, I think, like 10 of them this year, which is or probably, actually probably more than that. Um, they get the job done on set pieces, which, you know, can't say enough about the incredible work and that that Leon Hapgood and, and those guys do in the coaching staff and Cavalry. And it's, uh, it's the big characters showing up in the big moments, right, Mitchell? I mean, the first one is Ali Moosey to Dan Klump. The second one is uh, Ali Moosey from a, from a corner with Sergio Camargo playing that little pass up top. Uh, these guys, I mean, sorry, Klump and, uh, and Moosey, both nominated for player of the year. Uh, they are the players that they needed to step up in these moments, right? Yeah, they did. And these are the players that maybe haven't stepped up for them in the past in playoff games. I mean, I was there at Tim Hortons Field last year for that second leg where, you know, Moosey and Joe Mason, who was leading the line at the time, barely touched the ball for the entire 90 minutes and had no influence over that game whatsoever. So to see, I thought Ali Moosey in particular to come out and, and give the shift he did, not, not just offensively, obviously, um, setting up and scoring the goal and creating a, a ton of other chances, but defensively as well, getting back. He had that incredible tackle on Sean Young in the second half that, you know, I really thought was a big moment in the game in terms of the intent that Cavalry were showing. So um, to have him deliver like that, you know, Klomp obviously fantastic, uh, takes that set piece perfectly. Carducci, the big saves, you know, the guys um the the big players you know they were there and maybe they haven't been in the past and Calvary haven't had those game breaking performances that you know you can say a, a Schwanier for Forge have had you know in in past right. seasons obviously so that was a, a big deal for them coming into these playoffs and and finding it in a moment like this was huge yeah it it, it definitely was um and it is about time right i know that obviously Tommy did Tommy Wilden Jr was quick to point out after the game that this wasn't technically their first playoff win <laughs> as a club. They did win a game in PEI over Pacific as well. Uh, but this is their first knockout playoff win in a, you know, a, a do or die win or go home situation. Uh, it's the first time they've won one of those. First time they've won one at Spruce Meadows at home as well. Um, and it does feel, we've been saying it all year, there is a bit of a different feel to this cavalry team who obviously went on and ran away with the regular season and now are showing... That maybe they can also also get that job done in the playoffs when it counts. Now they obviously go into Hamilton, which you know won't be easy, but I think they'll definitely be relishing that opportunity, right? Yeah, I mean, this was the mark against their record. They were the great CPL regular season team who, you know, every season when it came to the fall and, and the postseason, they were 
um, you know, they, they just fell apart. So to have a performance like this and, you know, again, from for most of the 90 minutes to be in control, to be able to hold on late like that, because obviously there was an opportunity maybe for it to go the way uh, past Calvary playoff performances have gone. But to be able to hold on like that, um, again, that's kind of been the story of their second half of the season. And to be able to finally translate all the good things, like you said, that they've done during a regular season into the postseason and have it be a Calvary performance. This is and truly was the new Calvary that they like to um, kind of label this side as. Yeah, 100%. And now they, they get that opportunity to continue that and go to Tim Hortons Field. And as Tommy said, bury some ghosts, but I'm going to take issue with that. Uh, Tommy, if you're listening, you cannot bury a ghost. <laughs> they, they they simply won't stay underground. They go through walls and stuff, man, like this. We're gonna have to come up with a, a better a better phrase yeah. there. This but... is a science podcast, Tommy. You can't fool us. <laughs> you, I, do you bury demon? I don't, are demons like physical? I don't. I, anyway, anyway, uh, Cavalry are in the final after outstanding, outstanding performance in the playoffs at home, and I think we, uh, you know, it's, it's well deserved. But let's go into Pacific a little bit because their season is now over uh sadly for for all the fans out in vancouver Island, and the players and staff um and they do have a lot to be proud of from this playoff run obviously winning that game at home against york we've talked about the travel all the way across the country to halifax to play that game uh, and win that one on incredibly short rest and then you know, as as james merriman talked about after the game they didn't get out of halifax till tuesday this week they went straight to calgary trained there so they've been Players have been on the road in hotels, you know, away from families for a very long time, uh, just over a week and a half, uh, and it, or no, about a week. But uh, <laughs> we're a science yeah, podcast. We're not a math podcast. We're not a, we're not a math <laughs> podcast. Uh, but this may have been just a, you know, that that last hurdle was a little bit too far for the Mitchell. What do you think was kind of going wrong for Pacific, especially in the first half of this game? Well, I think for for certain, obviously, allowing that first goal um, is is a big thing. Uh, you know, I think Christian had the stat before the match on on the one soccer broadcast about I, I think teams are undefeated now in in the postseason when they score the first goal. So um, that shows just how important that that is in terms of yeah, obviously getting on that front foot and with the way Pacific have been playing in these these playoffs and more of that you know defensive shell and and maybe inviting some of the the you know, pressure and possession and that sort of thing. Uh, the first goal is critical. So once they can see that, and obviously with the way Cavalry are playing and the big momentum that they seem to be building on from the, the start of the match, I think that's where they really got into trouble. And obviously, um, you know, they were able to, to create some chances late. But, uh, you know, when you go down a couple of goals in a playoff match, I, I think even more so than a regular season game, you know, when the opponent has something to just hold on to like that and they're going to give absolutely everything to, to try and hold on to. Um, it's a really, really tough margin to overcome. Yeah. Yeah, it, it certainly is. Um, when the lineups came out for this game, we were a little surprised because Pacific lined up in a back five, which I don't think we'd seen them do all year really. And, and James Merriman was pretty honest about it after the game. He talked about how the reason for that was simply Kunle Dadaluk was suspended. Uh, they didn't have, they don't, certainly don't have a player that can replace his pace and his ability to get up the field and also get back and defend. So the only way they could kind of try and, and make up for that was to put an extra defender there and allow Zachariah Bahus to get a little bit higher up the pitch and have some cover behind him. Uh, Mitch, what did you think of this kind of new look for Pacific? It's two games in a row now. They've kind of surprised us with a, a lineup switch after the 4-4-2 in Halifax. What did you make of their lineup and their, their I guess, kind of tactical approach to this game well i think overall maybe it's a lesson for for james Merriman and merriman and pacific that you know they can play in different ways and maybe this is something that if we'd seen them shift to a little bit earlier in the season not necessarily the five at the back but maybe trying some different things tactically versus the four three three that they played for most of the regular season then you know, maybe things would have gone differently over the second half. And, you know, you saw the top sides like Cavalry and Forge evolve tactically in terms of their formations and, and different things that they did over the course of the season. So um, while you want to keep that base identity of your side and, and 
you know that's that's very important you also do want to try and shift things especially when you're playing sides you know multiple times over a season so i think that's a lesson that uh, maybe merriman as a young manager manager will take away from this but you know the back five you're always going to be set up for for the way the match started which is you're going to have to absorb a lot of pressure and you know then it came down to okay what moments and where can we let them have you know, the ball on the field and an open play. I thought they did a pretty solid job. You know, Calvary had a few chances, but overall mm -hmm. they did a pretty good job of clogging up those key areas. But then, you know, as we mentioned off the top, when you give away that many set pieces against a, a Calvary team like this, it, it doesn't matter, you know, what formation you're in. Um, they're going to have their their opportunity to, to put a ball into the box and, and cause you some issues. So that's really where things went wrong. You know, I thought overall it was, it was okay. Um, it offered some good ideas going forward. Maybe, um, maybe not quite enough in the final third in terms of Angaro maybe being stuck up there alone a, a few times and them not having numbers to to go with him. But I think that was always going to be the the case in a match like this when they're on the road. So uh, overall, I, I thought it was a, an interesting strategy um, that maybe didn't wasn't decisive in the match, but. Um, again, maybe shows that this team going forward is a little more tactically flexible than um, I guess they've attempted so far this year. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, actually, because they haven't necessarily changed things up that often this season. And, and when they have, it has been mostly due to significant abs absences, as it was today. Um, you know, quickly, t just to, to touch on some of the other reaction they had after the game, Tommy mayer Jaguer spoke about how he didn't feel like they had enough energy in the first half and, and maybe weren't getting up the pitch fast enough. Um, and he, he said, you know, it's a, it's a young team. He thought the pressure might've got to them a little bit, uh, which was an interesting thing to hear him say. And and maybe he's right. Obviously it is a, a tough atmosphere in Calgary, uh, especially when you're, you know, in, in your box and you're, you're right in front of the fans uh, kind of <laughs> getting down on you. Um, but I, I don't know. It, it was a young team. Maybe I don't know how to, how to really assess this, uh, this season for Pacific because they, they were at times a young team, but many of their young players were key key performers. I mean, Emil Gazdov, we've spoken about him a lot, and you wrote about him in the middle of the week. He was outstanding towards the end of the year, I think, um, and then certainly uh, a lot to be proud of for that young goalkeeper and the way he responded to some challenges this season. But now that this Pacific story for 2023 is over, Mitch, how do we, how do we look at it? Because it was up, and then it was down, and then it was up again in the playoffs, and now, uh, I guess, a, a disappointment in the way it ended, but I, I don't know. Is this a, is this a good season for Pacific? I I guess for them, it's never a good season if they don't lift the trophy, but uh, where, where are you at with this team at the moment? I'm kind of mad. You got to ask this question and don't have to answer it, to be honest, because it is <laughs> such a, such a tough one, but I do think overall, you know, it has to be seen as a disappointment when, mm -hmm. um, you know, they were so high up in the table uh, until the very, very end, uh, you know, it could have been them hosting the final in theory, if they'd, held on a little bit, you know, they could have even lifted the the CPL shield and had a, a solid opportunity to, to do that if they'd held on as well. So I think if when you exit this season, you know, you didn't even make a final, um, you ended up finishing fourth in the regular season. Uh, I think a lot of those, those goals and, and metrics that they would have set at the start of the year, um, you know, weren't, weren't really accomplished. So I think it's a, it has to be a season of lessons from them and, you know, you have to, now take stock and figure out, okay, what do we need to, to, I guess, extrapolate how we played over those first few games and in our like most dominant moments, because they, they were fantastic when they were at their best. They were, you know, mm -hmm. they could kill you in so many different ways offensively. They were outstanding defensively and in, in, in their, you know, best games and, you know, but we didn't see that consistently enough down the stretch. And I think consistency and finding out how, you know, whether it's bringing in new personnel or, or that sort of thing um, needs to happen to, or whether they can grow from within to, uh, yeah, to get that to that next level. Because I think uh, the, the bulk of the season showed that they're still behind, you know, the, the top few teams in, in the Canadian Premier League. Yeah, I think that's that's probably fair. Um you know, as we as we I guess put a bow on this game, obviously Pacific unfortunately heading home, but Cavalry uh, going to Hamilton next week. We'll get obviously way more in depth on this final in the course of the week. But Mitch, it's always these guys, isn't it? <laughs> these two teams. Yeah. 
Uh, well, they haven't met in a final since the very first year. Um, mm -hmm. That one was uh, obviously went Forge's way on aggregate. But this time, really quickly, your, your opening thoughts on these two teams going head to head for a, for a trophy next weekend. Well, I think for one thing, uh, I'm so excited to see it be one match, right? Like we've seen the two-legged chess match matches between these sides mm -hmm. um, and obviously the, the 2019 final and, and last year's semifinal. And, you know, those have had their moments and been fun for, from a more tactical standpoint. But this one in one game where, you know, everything is shortened and everything is magnified, I think that's going to make it so fascinating and, you know, considering the the quality of matches we usually see in one-offs between these sides i think that's gonna be so excited and obviously the the sixth meeting between them um this season as well it is also just gonna make it for two managers who you know love to shift the pieces around the board and that sort of thing it will be just fascinating to see what sort of tactical wrinkles the two teams come up with and obviously you've had bobby you know having 14 days now he's got seven days to at least know which yeah. opponent he's going to play but yeah it's going to be a great final and i absolutely can't wait because there's just so many storylines going into it and um, there would have been either way uh, with with how this match turned out but this really just feels like the two heavyweights over the course of this season um going head to head maybe maybe more of forge you know on their past record as as a heavyweight contender and cavalry for what they've done lately and um, yeah, again, they'll be going into there to try and bury something. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out what they're trying to bury. <laughs> Not a ghost. No, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll ask Tommy about that this week. He'll be, he'll be around. Um, yeah, I'm sure he won't be busy. Not, he doesn't, I don't like he has a final or anything to prepare for. Um, forged by the, I mean, these were the top two teams in the league this year. Uh, and you know, by virtue of that, obviously Forge have now guaranteed themselves a spot in CONCACAF as well, which will be uh, a huge, Huge weight, a huge win for them. They obviously love that competition. Uh, and it's going to be exciting. Man, these teams are very close, especially at Tim Hortons Field. I kind of have a feeling this one's going deep. Uh, we haven't seen penalties in a CPO playoff game before. Hmm. Might be the one, man. This might be the one. <laughs> they met at Tim Hortons Field twice this year. Drama. <laughs> and they were both draws. There's a two all and then a nil-nil at Tim Hortons Field this year. I can kind of see it, man. I can kind of see it. I know uh, not everybody's a huge fan of penalty shootouts. I love them. So uh, that would be electric at Tim Hortons Field. Anyway, uh, if you're around the Hamilton or the Toronto area, get your tickets. It's uh, Saturday, October 28th, 6 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Mountain. If you are that way inclined and want to make a trip from Calgary, that would be that would be very cool too. Um, but if not, I'm sure you'll be uh, you'll be watching at home or in bars in in that city as well. Uh, and we will have a lot more coverage of the final in the week leading up. Um, you can check out all the all the other writing and coverage of the semifinal today at campiel.ca uh, and we will speak to you soon.